Good evening, Hanshi Steve Kaufman here. Welcome to Hanshi's World. Tonight's episode is going to be very interesting. You get a little bit of an education. If some of you are looking down at the bottom of the screen, you can see some uh, paraphernalia there. Okay, I'm with Hanshi Nikwan Murphy. Hanshi Nikwan Murphy. We're going to start it out from the martial aspect of it. Has been involved with a system called Kuroshi Do. Okay. And Papa San Kanti, about 150 years ago, when they started putting this thing together, okay? <laughs> and, like, you are carrying on the legacy and the tradition, pretty much, and you're training uh, a lot of people in self-defense and hardcore, get yes. down, let's do it, martial arts, okay? Yes. And that's a qualification that I insist on that people are going to have to, like, present me with before I'm going to have them on the show. I happen to know you, so I know that, okay? Yes. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, Kuroshi Do and your involvement with it? But before we do that, you're going to be having a 40th anniversary of the system on November 1st. Yes. In Queens, okay? Uh, at Anton's. And it's going to be a really shoot 'em up, bang, bang time. Now, I got to be careful. No, I said that as a goof, okay? Uh, we're going to be talking about handguns and how to select a gun and how to, like, uh, Become familiar with it, okay? But before we get into that, this is what we're talking about, okay? And this is going to be a spectacular event from what I'm hearing from the pipeline, okay? So uh, we're looking forward to doing that. Uh, Hanshi Murphy is also involved with a couple of other, uh, I guess, uh, criteria in his life, okay? You're a retired New York State Corrections officer. Yes. You're a master... Gun instructor. Yes. What do you call it? Firearms, firearms gun, instructor. Uh, yes. Firearms instructor. Yes. Firearms instructor. The southern tier of New York State. So you're going to be educating the people. And I like the people to get an education of what's going on. Again, I'm going to stop talking in about two minutes. But first, the commercial. <laughs> you got to have the commercial. Got, got to do it. Uh, as you folks know, Hanshi Warrior Press uh, is my uh, publishing company. And we've just released, I have three of them with me, three new releases. One of them is called Homage for Miyamoto Musashi. This is 122 haiku, translated and put together based on the Book of Five Rings, which I am primarily known for. The Book of Five Rings is the best-selling martial arts book in the world, by the way, philosophically speaking. Okay? So Very Homage to Miyamoto Musashi, you can get this at hanchi.com. We'll talk about that. Also, did a reissue of The Lady of the Rings, which I had done a couple of years ago. Uh, but I went through it again, and uh, I came out with a Lady of the Rings cover, pink. You know, that kind of thing. I got to say, oh, you're being sexist. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's also available at Hashi.com. And another one, which is a little bit of an ego trip for me. It's a couple of short stories, poems, and things that I've written over the years called Abracadaver. Abracadaver. And briefly, the short story Abracadaver, which is a novelette, is about, you ready for this one? Uh, Obsquatulation. Spell that. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Obsquatulation. Anyway, so these books are available, and don't, uh, you know, be shy. Um, buy them. I'll sign them and send them to you. Okay. But let's put the show back in the perspective it's supposed to be a Hanshi Nikwan Murphy. Hanshi Murphy, tell us about Kuroshido. And you know what? The show is yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Hanshi. Thanks for coming, buddy. I appreciate that. Thank you, Hanshi. Yeah. Um, as was said, I'm Hanshi Nikwan Murphy yeah. from the Kuroshido system. Kuroshido in itself means way of the black warrior. Okay. Now, the reason for that is simple because the three co-founders... So Soke Papasan, along with Soke Hassan Khalik and Soke Lassin Austin, they were Vietnam era vets okay. who had multiple knowledge in different martial arts, and they decided, let's do something that reflects us and the environment that we are training people in, which it started out in the Brownsville section of Brooklyn okay. back in 1974. But prior to that, who I was with them prior to that, and um, when they put it together, and it was a culmination of five styles, Shotokan Karate, Mudakwan, okay. Akiomaru Jiu-Jitsu, Judo, and Kroko Shinkai. 
Okay. But it also had a sixth element of, of bojitsu. See, this is essential because a lot of people think they get stuck in one particular form right. and they really don't evolve. I'm not saying that they're not good. Right. Yeah, I got, I got to clear that up. You yeah, know? you know, and... But you have to mix. Sure, and, yeah. you know, you got to come up with that formula, and Kuroshido right. was that formula. Okay. And it worked, and we, you know, they presented it to the grandmasters of the time, uh, Professor Elmore, Hansi uh, Charles Davis Sparrow, um, uh, Dr. Moses Powell, uh -huh. Professor V, yeah. you know, people, you know, uh, Professor Duncan, people like that, you know. It was Did you know those gentlemen? I met them okay. as a young man uh, through my instructors and even got, got on the mat with all, almost all of them. Good. And man. have trained with them. You never you know, forget that, son. Not one day. As a matter of fact, <laughs> um, exclusively, I actually trained and have my black belt in Akiyomaru Jiu Jitsu as well. Okay. So um, it was a great education coming up in martial yeah. arts, great education. And they blessed it and said, go with it. And we were heavy on the tournament circuits, getting our name out there. And um, people got to know us. Already. Like you said, you met Sergei Popson 15 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> no, when I, when I had <laughs> hair. <you know? laughs> yeah, and so did he. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, and um, it, it was a, a great, Great growth. Good. And we've touched the lives of thousands of students. Uh -huh. And we've made a difference in a lot of their lives. As it should be. And Crochido yeah. has expanded. I mean, myself, along with my counterparts, uh, Hansi Kumusan Turner and Hansi Lemuel Isaac, Dr. Isaac, um, you know, we kind of oversee the day to day Good. operations. Good. Good. Of Kuroshido and the different dojos and the different black belts under that, uh, we've gone from, you know, Brownsville, Brooklyn, to Atlanta, Georgia. We had dojo in California. We've had okay. dojo. Um, we have uh, Yonkers, the Bronx. Do you travel around to the different dojos all over the place? I actually do. I actually Good. Do. Yeah, yeah. I actually do because you know one of the responsibilities of the Hanshis and the three of us we do that. One of the responsibilities of it is to. Nurture the other black belts and get them to grow. That's right. You know, right. and like also let their students see where their instructors are getting their knowledge from. Very so, important. Very you know, important. Yeah, you know, yeah. the saying in corrections takes balls to work behind the walls. So now. Offend anybody? <laughs> so here I am. I know a couple know. of ladies of your trade who I wouldn't get, <laughs> get in their face. Me yeah, you know. <laughs> so, you know, but working in a place where I started out. Cut my teeth in place like Sing Sing. Okay. Uh -huh. Now, there was over 3,000 inmates, all convicted felons. Total about 750 officers that's broken up between three different shifts. So wow, okay. So you they got hands full you. kind right. of thing. Yeah, so my martial arts, even though it wasn't like a thing where I was going off and saying, oh, let me try this, let me try that. No, no. Nothing like no, that. No, no, no. But at the same time, when I needed it, it was there. And it wasn't mm. nothing that was, um, you know, over the top. It could be something as simple as hit a pressure point. Take him down, this, man. And make this guy you just know. kind of stop and freeze. That's all. Just yeah. nice. Whatever was necessary. Nothing more than that. You know. But it was something that helped me. So you essentially have hands-on experience. Hands-on <laughs> experience. experience. Exactly. Go. So wow. it, um... Listen, I loved it. I loved the job I did. Okay. And being a tr becoming a trainer, you know, I was certified under uh, New York State Municipal Police Training Council, okay. Division of Criminal Justice. And Lay uh, it all out, man. Lay it all out. They, I know, want the people to know that you're a serious contender. Well, you know what? My whole, a the, serious contender. A serious contender. Well, <laughs> the, you know, the whole thing is that with the martial arts, yeah. it gave me a certain kind of a discipline and okay. a certain kind of hunger. And that hunger was for knowledge. There you go. Okay. And also, if I can share what I have, and there was a lot of correlation in some of the stuff that I heard my instructors say in, in martial art in the dojo, and then I was able to relate it later right. in my career right. and actually even use some of the same terminology. And it got to the point where it was like, it was like a walk in the park. It was like I was so used to it. 
that even when I That's went right. to, for my certification as an instructor, it was kind of funny. They even said, the uh, instructors that were evaluating me at the time, they said, you're so comfortable talking in front of a class. And I'm like, That's yeah. right, yeah. Well, I've been, I've been doing, doing it a thousand years. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, you know, my martial arts has carried me quite a bit. Uh huh. So, I love it, and it's become my life. Here's it a loaded question life. for you. Where would you have been at this point in your life without our way, without our thing? You know now, what? I, I, I like to ask that question, man. I, I, you because know what? Um, I wouldn't have been on the wrong path, I can say that, because Good. of the, okay. the, the upbringing, the family, yeah, my parents yeah, that I had. Values, yeah, well. But I will say that I probably wouldn't be... Um, the characteristics that I have, or okay. that that, persona, that, that more warrior yeah. mindset yeah, wouldn't yeah, be yeah. there. Um, I'd probably be have like some others that get caught up in certain kinds of professions and have that tunnel vision, if you will. Okay. Um, rather than being someone that can kind of reach out and look at and grasp different, you know, different things. Um, I, I got to say that my martial arts has made me more aware, more open-minded, more open in general. Yeah. Um, and it was great. You know, yeah. I appreciate that. And it, it even helps me, you know, dealing with my family, like my kids, you know, who are grown, <laughs> you know. Tell me about it, man. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's right. I know, uh, you know, I can make my son cringe by, you know, like he didn't get like a spanking. He used to get a, a wrist lock. <laughs> when, he was, like, when he was yeah. bad, you know. You were, um, yeah, I mean, you're still working even though you're retired yes. and you're training. You said, say, you are the, uh, I guess, the uh, CEO of a uh, pretty important um, so a, a protection, a, a, you know, well, bodyguard like, group. Well, or I like to think so. Um, I actually, well, tell us a little bit about that. Well, that, that organization is called X Ring Master. X, X Ring, Ring Master. Master. Dot com. I, that's the uh, the website www.xringmaster.com. Okay. Www okay how yeah, that, I can see it. We'll put that on. How there. that title even came about, X Ring Master, is um, when you're shooting at a target or a silhouette. Yeah. The center portion of that target is there's a there's actually an X there, and that's the yeah, highest that's point right. value. Okay. So that's how that idea popped in my head as X Ring Master. So not to say that I'm like the end all be all. Yeah. However, I could teach someone how to get there. Okay. If nothing else, I could teach someone how People to get People can get there. in touch with you. If, yes, they and can. And you'll train them. Yes, they yeah, yes, No freebies. Definitely. No freebies. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough with that already, man. Yeah, no, definitely yeah. not. <laughs> but um, with X Ring Master, um, we do a, a, a few things. We uh, not only do uh, the firearms training, we also do um, self defense training okay. for security and law enforcement. We are... Must be pretty busy. We try to be. We're yeah. trying. Yeah. Um, we also train um, people in the uh, acting uh, world. Oh, how to... How to, how carry. to carry a firearm, like on a television show. Watch like how that. hip the segue is. You know what a segue is? Yes, I do. Uh, okay. Watch how a segue is. Wow. While we're on that subject, <laughs> why, <laughs> why don't you talk to us a little bit about firearms, handguns, and things like that, and the safety aspects, well, and how to pick a gun, man. You know, well, see, somebody's got to go, I'm going to do my thing, well, pop, pop, pop. It doesn't work that way. You well, know? that's the one of the main yeah. things. That's why I have these, these are all, uh, you know, training weapons. They're okay. all plastic. They're not, you know, not live at all. But, and these are some of the weapons that I use in some of my training before someone would actually go to a range and actually use a live weapon. Good. Um, one of the things that, you know, People do, when they go to buy a firearm, you know, they get their license and they go to buy a firearm. It's a hassle to get a license, right? Not totally, no. Really, it's not. It's really not that bad. Okay. Um, the problem is what people try yeah. to go for, right away they want to go to CEO instead of starting out at the bottom. Yeah, and they want to be know? Wyatt Earp, man. Yeah, you know, exactly. Yeah. And it's, you know, you just got to do it like that. that. Way. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, I learned how to punch and kick. Can I have a black belt? Exactly. No, you can have a third black belt. I mean, you you know. So, but when they buy firearms, that's usually the biggest problem for okay. most people. Why is that? Because think about when you buy a car. You go to a, a car dealership, 
You want to sit in that car, make sure it's comfortable, make sure you can reach all the controls. Yes. Things like that. A firearm is no different. A firearm, because it can go from very basic to very extravagant. And the thing is, you know, pretty is good and big is, you know, I want the biggest and the best. But can you handle that? Very you know, good. and that's, that's right. what's the problem. Can you reach all the parts of that weapon that you need to reach in order to make it function? How about, can you strip it? Can you feel strip it and put it back together blindfolded like we had to do when I was in the, you know, in the Well, service. you know, eventually you get there. That's, yeah, you know, you okay. know what I mean? You know what I mean? I have to do it blindfolded, but how about being able to load it in the dark of night in your bedroom when that intruder comes in or something like that, you know? Okay, all right. You have to know, just you know, like in a martial Don't sleep with it loaded under the pillow. Well, I don't know. Depends. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's why I don't She get might my, grab it. That's why I don't <laughs> get to <laughs> <no> sleep at <laughs> night. But anyway, um, you know, just like in the martial arts, we say yeah. with a martial yeah. weapon, know your weapon. Yeah. Same concept. Okay. Now, I give you the perfect example. And again, this is uh, plastic. It's not real. You see it's blue. It does not have any functioning parts okay. to it, all right? Now, one of the things, like, this is uh, what we consider a semi-automatic pistol. Now, one of the things is that these things have magazines. What does a semi-automatic mean? Semi-automatic pistol, what semi-automatic means is that for each time that you pull the trigger, it will fire and it will function. Eject the, uh, the round, the spent shell casing. Okay, okay. All right? And then go back into load, strip and load another round into the chamber, and it's ready to fire again. Okay, not like a revolver. A revolver wouldn't revolver be that. Revolver right? works that differently because now think of the word revolver. Revolver yeah. has a wheel and it turns. So okay, each time so you pull the trigger, it revolves. It keeps the cartridge in there, kind of thing. Right. right. Okay. Now, um, and plus the way they they actually the dynamics of how they function, whereas a semi-automatic usually functions in two ways: either a blowback method or what's called inertia. Driven. Okay. So that's kind of how they function. Now, that, again, is one of those things that you would learn in my class. You'll learn about your weapon. Um, now, this particular uh, training weapon, you know, has a detachable magazine. Now, people like to say the word clip. There is such a thing as a clip, but these aren't clips. Okay. They are magazines. What's a clip? Remember the old um, World War II? Two M1 rifles. Yeah, back to back banana clips. I mean, well, well, well the ones that had, the, you know, those M ones. They had the, like the, those things that just hold the bullets in place and they push it down. Yes. It's like a paper clip and you just clip it. That's a clip. That is an okay. actual clip. All right. It's open on three sides. Okay. Whereas a magazine is closed on all sides except to the top. Okay. So and it's spring loaded, where those clips are not spring loaded. Okay. So that's a difference. Okay, now that's a fifty dollars class you just got. I'm just only let you know. I got an that idea. I got an idea for you. We'll talk about it before, <laughs> when you when you're done with this. Man. But I'm sure so, you've thought um, about it, but it hasn't happened yet. But the thing is Go this: ahead. if my hand is too small for this weapon, I wouldn't be able to change out my ammunition because I'd be fishing trying to release that. Okay. Hit that release button. So that's what I mean by people pick the wrong weapon sometimes. Instead of what's comfortable to the hand, what they can actually utilize and actually function without hesitation, they got to start fumbling. So that's the problem, you know, and picking a, the wrong weapon sometimes. Um, you ha I've had people come to class, and they'll have this firearm, and this real small, tiny, and the, and the person's hand would be bigger than mine, and it's got these nice little pink grips on them or something like that, yeah. and I'll say, why, Design did, a piece? Why, did, <laughs> why did you pick this weapon? And I've literally had people say, well, it was cute. Okay. Now, here's right. my thing about a firearm. My thing about a firearm is this. It ain't there, cute, man. There's no bad firearm yeah. as long as you can work it, as long as you can function with it. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. Any firearm that I can pick up, I can utilize. I have no problem with that. Now, because my thing is this, the first rule of a gunfight, have a gun. You know, right? Because if you don't, that's just you getting shot. Yeah, don't bring a knife to a gunfight. So, you, <laughs> you know, that's one of the aspects about that. Okay. Um, but it's a, um, it's a tool, and you have to have the right You tool. said the magic word, by the way. Which is? Tool. Yes. Same thing, my sword is a tool. Exactly. My sigh are tools. Right. Okay. Right, and okay. you know, 
people got to understand that. You know, it's not about, you know, now I got an S on my chest, I'm this, I'm that. Yeah. No, we don't need that. Okay, good. Okay? Good. We discuss, in my classes, I discuss about the mindset. Okay. You know, just like we do in martial arts, it's one related, and it does cross that, that, that boundary. You know, martial arts, firearms, you know, you have to teach a mindset. Now, you, okay. have, you want that person to get it. You want yeah. to explain it to them in a way that they'll get it, where they know that they're not just, um, oh, I got a gun now, I'm the baddest person in the world. Well, if you handle it right, you are, but nobody's got to know. Nobody's got to know. That's right. Nobody that's should right. see it, none of, none of that. But, yeah. unfortunately, you know, we can lead the horse to water. Absolutely. You know, as the saying goes. But, um, yeah, I try, and I also, if you notice, I have different types here. Yes, I was going to ask have, you about that. I have, um, because... It's a Glock, a 45. And a yeah, whatever. one's like a 1911 style 45. Yeah, that's what we had. Yeah, you know, I mean, right, that's you know, it wasn't as pretty as this, but that's okay. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> no, but it was steel. <laughs> it was, it was, what color? I can't remember what that was. Yeah, it was a, a blue steel. Blue steel, yeah. that's right, right there. Yeah. And made noise. Yeah, it made yeah. a lot of noise. You know, but again. And if you didn't hold it right, it took you yeah, it took your own. <laughs> Well, here's the thing. I'll give yeah. you a perfect example. If now, if you look at this, look at the width of the grips. Okay. So, again, very, this is what I mean by, important. Yeah. you know, picking the right size for the person. Okay. Because if you have a big enough hand, cool. If not, this Too might small. do better. Exactly. You know? So, and then depending on. Now, this one I actually put in a holster, um, and that's another thing I go over in my classes, are the different types of holsters. Right. You got to have the right related equipment to go with the weapon that you choose. That's right. So, you were in New York, mm -hmm. okay, and people like to say, I want to get a gun permit or something like that. It doesn't work that way unless you're actually in the field, so to speak, okay? So, they would get a premises permit. Yes. That is not the end of the world to get, I understand. I mean, no, as long not. as you understand the parameters of it, it's got to be in a locked box. It does not go off your premises. If right. it does, it's got to be in a box with a lock on the trigger, unloaded, the whole thing yes. like that. Is yes. there anything that the audience should know about that as far as going to get a premise permit before they start the class or well, after they start well, the class? Well, they have to actually do it before because before you can touch a firearm, any firearm, okay. you have to have uh, a, a gun permit. In the city of New York, um, some jurisdictions outside of New York, they will allow that. But if you're a resident of New York and you're going to have that firearm in New York City, you have to go get a gun permit, and, it go, and it's through the New York City Police Department. Okay, You can actually go on their website and download the actual application. Yeah, I know getting a rifle permit is no big deal at all. Right. In comparison. And it's kind of like the same thing because yeah. you still got to go through the background check. Check, yeah. You still have to have the fingerprints, the whole nine yards. Um, of course, a handgun, they kind of make sure it is scrutinized a lot more because it's so small hey, that yeah, it can right. be secreted on you and move around different places. So what do you think about the uh, gun control lobbies and the gun control laws? I mean, I, I, I try not to, like, voice an opinion, okay? Well, but I don't have an issue with you being able to protect yourself. And let's leave it there. You know exactly what I'm saying by mm -hmm. saying that, okay? I mean, like, all this thing, I, you know, I said, well, if... Uh, if uh, everybody gave up their guns, the only people who had guns would be bad guys, kind of a thing like that. Well, you know, there's all kinds of lame things going on. Well, you know, What's your take on the whole idea of having listen, a handgun? I believe any responsible citizen... Define that. When I say responsible, someone who has a sense of the law, someone who has a sense of they're not looking to be wider, they're just looking to protect okay. themselves, all right. and they want to go about it in a proper way you know, go through the proper channels to gain a gun license and so forth and follow the laws. Now, you know, there's something to be said about that in terms of, well, only the criminals will have a gun. Yeah. Well, let's face it. I don't know any criminal that goes to and say, listen, I want a gun license for this gun I just bought off the street on the corner. Yeah, they don't that's do that. right. I understand. They that. don't care. Okay. Laws are only for people, people who will follow them. Who will follow them. That's right. And yeah. that's fine. Yeah. Now, sometimes I think... Um, the powers that be yeah. kind of go a little over the top. Okay, good. Um, okay. Because, 
you know, they go into a panic when it's really not necessary. Um, because again, it's going to be those bad people who deal, who do these things, people uh -huh. with ill intent. Um, All right. And they punish because they can put their hands on the legal person. That's who they punish. In a, in of course, effect. yeah. Well, that's always the way that. You know, works. unfortunately, and you know, it's just unfortunate. That you know we get kind of caught up in the vortex, if you will, okay. of someone else's crime, the people who are doing things the right way. Okay, but I, I think people should be able to protect themselves. I sure. mean, New York is probably one of the most stringent places for this kind of thing. Oh, but I know you like living in like Miami or something like that. You bring in your right. drivers. I don't know. You know, bring in your driver's license. Right. Say I'm clean. Bang. Let me have a uh, sure, I mean, Desert uh, Eagle, man. You know, there's a that. lot of states that, you know, are open and welcome. To, like, anybody can have a gun. No problem. But like you said, New York is very, you know, have very good strict laws, you know, that should be adhered to. And uh, I don't have a problem with that. Okay. My biggest thing is this. If you're going to get a firearm, the most important thing, other than picking out the right one, Practice. training. I was just going to say practice with Get it. training. That's Go right. to a reputable instructor. Get training so you know your weapon, so you're not making foolish mistakes, so you're not shooting yourself in the pinky toe. Okay. You know? That's right. You understand the safety aspect, and that is like one of the, my biggest pet peeves is safety. That's you know? right. And, you know, people get kind of cavalier about handling <laughs> firearms. Oh, yes, they do. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, the guy buys a firearm, and his buddy comes over, and they're sitting there having a beer, like, hey, you want to see my gun? Yeah, here. Boom. Yeah. You know. No. Of course. Things of like course. that, you know. We <sighs> Hanchi Nikwan Murphy, thank you very much, man. I hope you folks really appreciate this, because I appreciate it. And you can tell it's real, okay, because it's not like I didn't ask any jive questions, you know what I mean? That's, it's, it's, kind of let me go on my own. You that's just go. it, that's it, that's it, you know. Because I know how to hustle a slice of, <laughs> I know how to hustle a slice of pizza and a Coke, you know, so, okay. No, I really appreciate you coming on and talking to the folks and, you know, letting them know what's going on here and how this whole thing works. How do we get in touch with you? Well, Xringmaster.com, right, I understand well, that's that. One. Then they can click on contact. They can click on contact. My phone number is on there. I yeah. also we don't uh, give the phone number on there. No problem, but okay. it's on the website. Okay. Um, as well as the email address. Um, they can also reach Extreme Master via Facebook, as well. Okay. And. Um, All right. Yeah. You know, Hunchy Nikwan Murphy on Facebook. Who's that?